How y'all doing tonight? Oh, I'm good. Take this opportunity to welcome y'all out to the town hall meeting for the Ryan Post Office. And um, we have someone here to speak to us. Her name is Tiffany Noel, and she is the district director for the Congressman Mobile Town. I'm with Congressman Mo Brooks' office, and I have two other staffers with me here tonight as well. Stephen Davis from our D.C. office, and Debbie Eccles from our Hutt's office. And I'm sorry the Congressman cannot be here tonight. He had a prior engagement, especially with the rescheduling. Um, he couldn't be here, but I have a brief statement he wanted me to read. And we've also handed out, I hope everyone got one, we may have started to run out, but a letter that we sent to the Postmaster General on behalf of Ryland. So I wanted everyone to have that. And I'll just read the statement from him, um, from our office. In the past few months, our office has received an outpouring of letters, calls, and even Facebook, Facebook group invites from the concerned citizens of the Ryland community in regards to the possible closure of the Ryland Post Office. From the preliminary study of postal operations up to the announcement of the subsequent town hall meeting tonight, our office has been in frequent contact with the United States Postal Service including the following. On March 22nd, we met with the Government Relations Department to discuss the study procedure and possible scenarios which could result in the coming months. On March 31st, we followed up with Kate Selena, the Government Relations Representative, to check on the status of the study and ask for any justification for possible closure. On April 7th, we received notice of a potential town hall meeting and reached out and communicated with Viola Freeman, the manager of consumer affairs and claims at the Alabama state level, to see if there would in fact be a town hall meeting for Ryland. On May 5th, we sent a letter to the Postmaster General requesting the Ryland Post Office remain open and requesting the Birmingham USPS headquarters fully address questions submitted at the town hall meeting with a written response within 15 days following the meeting. In closing, Congressman Brooks is aware of your concerns and understands the Ryland Post Office is important to the community. He recognizes the Post Office continually operates at a profit, is conveniently located for the citizens of Ryland, and provides a valuable service to many walk-in customers. But we also understand there is an overwhelming deficit and some cuts may need to be made. We just want to assure the cuts are appropriate and justified. If we can help you in any way, feel free to call on us. We've heard from many of you. Um, the only request I have is that if you contact our office and want a response, please be sure to leave your name and address. Names alone make it difficult for us to contact you and respond. Thank you. At this time, we're going to turn the meeting over to Mr. Derek King. He's the manager of post office operations for Area 1, Alabama District. Hey, good evening everybody um, thank you for having us here today um, the Postal Service is currently conducting a study of post operations here at the Rowland Post Office this study is just a study and no final decision has been made before the Postal Service can close down the Post Office we must give you all the opportunity to air your concerns and ask us questions um, today I have brought with me um, Reginald Capers he's manager for marketing, I have Don Ross, he's acting manager of customer service for everyone. Um, Anna Barnett, she's a manager of delivery programs. And Kalia Gori, she's here with delivery operations to take notes for this meeting. And Ms. Viola Freeman, she's the manager of consumer affairs. Um, so we know you're anxious, we know you're ready to ask questions. So without further ado, I'm gonna give the floor to Reginald Capers um, to address the audience. This works, huh? Okay, this works. I uh, I don't I don't like the podium. Too much distance between everybody. Um, we all know why we're here today. This is an opportunity for you to ask questions, and hopefully, we can address your concerns. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yes. Okay. We can address your concerns. So. Um, I don't want to spend a lot of time with the opening statement just so I can make sure that we get as many questions in as possible. So uh, we hear about the proposed closing. Uh, Derek talked about that. It's not approved yet. It goes through a long approval process from the state level here at the district for our team 
to the area vice president in Dallas, Texas, and to our headquarters office in Washington, D.C., and final approval through the Postal Regulatory Commission uh, also in Washington. So it's a long process. It is a proposal. It's not finalized, but part of it is that we have a meeting to hear the concerns from the community. So with that, thank you for having us here today, and I'll just open it up to questions. So let's start here. Yes, sir. My name is Larry Bear. I live down at the Ben Belleville here in the community. So I'd like to know what the thought process was to hold Ryland as one of the post offices that's in concern as far as the possible COVID. See, the fact that this post office does make a profit, and I'm not sure if the other ones are. But please, if you could explain the thought process that goes into this. Okay. The question is, what's the, the thought, the process for selecting offices? First thing is every office has been reviewed, is, is being reviewed or um, has been or will be reviewed. All 548 some odd post offices that and station and branches, which are obviously not post offices. So everything is being reviewed. Um, but the first thing that we are looking at is vacant offices, offices that don't have a sitting postmaster in it. So that's kind of the first thing that we look to see. If there's a sitting postmaster, that kind of gets pushed to the side because at this point we're not uh, closing facilities or proposing to close facilities that have an actual postmaster. So if there's an officer in charge or a postmaster relief working in a facility, then that is up for consideration. The other thing that we look for is the feasibility to consolidate. Meaning that if there's post office boxes, is it feasible for us to take the boxes out of the wall and put them in another location without changing the keys, without changing the, the delivery address, no change. The other thing is if an office has delivery routes in it, can the next receiving facility take all of the equipment for the delivery territory, fit the vehicles, and, and accommodate the additional employees? So that's kind of the, the big picture of how things are selected. So probably in the first phase, we got to about 100 offices identified, and we narrowed it down to about 40 facilities that were in the first proposal phase. So I hope that, that kind of answers it. 